Hey y'all, come on in. We're gonna head down to Studio B over here. I would say my job at the moment is recording engineer, mixer, and producer. So this is the control room here in Studio B. This place was built out in the late 70s. It's a really nice design. This is the second location of Muscle Shoals Sound uh, here in Sheffield, right on the Tennessee River. I started in Birmingham. I was in college and I was at a pawn shop and I found a Tascam 4-track machine that was cheaper than all the others and I realized it was cheaper because it didn't work. So I fixed it and I thought it was so cool to watch the meters work and I could hear everything back and whatnot. I never thought it was something you could actually do to, uh, you know, for a job or anything like that. And uh, I was in a band years ago. We went to record in a, more of a proper studio and I saw how it worked and what he was doing, the engineer was doing and stuff, and I thought this is what I should be doing because it's right up my alley. Uh, I started around 2009 collecting equipment. I had bought a small mixing console, a Pro Tool system, microphones, all that. I then went to intern at Ardent in Memphis in 2012. And when I got back to Birmingham from that, I guess I was, an, you know, so I thought I was an engineer now, you know, and. So that first few years were just tough, you know, not much going on. I had to learn how to maintain my equipment because I could not afford to hire technicians to fix any of this stuff. It'd be really resourceful and worked out of there for a while, up until just recently where I've moved here, up into Muscle Shoals. The first Muscle Shoals sound location was just a couple miles the other way. Uh, they cut a million hit records up there, then they moved here. This place was built out to a much more extravagant extent than the original one. It's got excellent acoustics. The live room sounds great with all the instruments. The playbacks and mixing in this room is just awesome. Lately up in the Shoals, there's been a bit of a resurgence in recording. More and more people are moving here, setting up studios or reviving some of the old studios. It's also cool for artists and engineers to be able to live in a spot that's not too expensive and to be able to work. It's also not too far from cities like Nashville, Birmingham, whatever. Uh, it's not that big a deal for artists to drive up and record. I mean, where else in the world can you be in a small town that's peaceful and quiet on a beautiful river and there's a bunch of different studios and a rich musical history? The job of the engineer is to keep things flowing smoothly, keeping the artists comfortable and not having them not get bored and then also having things sound as good as you can. A typical tracking session day, I'll be up here the night before, setting up all the microphones and instruments, getting all the patch bay set up, Pro Tools template. So when the morning comes and the band gets here, everything is almost ready to go. They'll get here, we'll get the instruments set up, drums, guitars, whatever. Uh, usually we'll start dialing in some drum sounds. And I'm, I'm big on getting drum sounds as good as I can from the get-go, so it takes me a little bit to uh, dial all that in. You have all these different instruments, whether it's a drum kit, you have multiple mics on it, guitar amps, keyboards, vocals, all these different sources are individual channels on this mixing console. You have to get all that to come together as good as you possibly can, and it all gets sent down to a stereo mix, which is what you hear when you listen to a song. And so the interesting thing is, between the artist, producer, and engineer, you're really creating essentially two waveforms that have to make people have an emotion or emotional reaction. So depending on what you do in these rooms alters how that wave is shaped, and if it's shaped well, then people get into it, you know? If it's not, they don't even want to hear it.